All right, welcome to the show, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. As always, I appreciate you, and I am so looking forward to talking about the energy update for March. This is a big month. Now, if you have been following any astrology um, insights, insiders, all of that kind of stuff, you will know that there are two specific dates in March that really stand out, two big planets doing some uh, big movements, and that does have a very big ripple effect. So we're gonna talk about that. We're also gonna talk about uh, several other things that my guides wanted to mention that is happening with March. So for those of you that have been feeling like uh, we had the energy of February that was really going to start moving forward, right? And for those of you that felt like, February, what happened? Where were you? Nothing happened for me particularly. I'm not saying me myself, but if you are feeling that way, March is one that really will be kicking it into motion. So as with anything, sometimes the energy takes a little bit to get rolling. For some, they may already feel like they are rolling big time, while others, it may be waiting for this astrological alignment of March to make all the rest of the things fall into place. So let's talk about this. So I had somebody ask me one time, uh, why do you bother talking about astrology when you can just go straight to spirit and get the goods? Well, the simple answer is all things are connected. Everything is connected. So just as I'm connected to you, we are connected to the trees and the energy on our planet. Our planet is connected to the planets in our solar system and our solar system is connected to the other systems within the Milky Way galaxy and all the galaxies are connected. It is like massive neural networks. So what happens in the skies, the way in which the energetics play when the planet has certain stars aligning in certain positions has an effect on what happens to us here. So that's why it matters and that's why March is a big month. So let's talk about it. Um, the theme for the theme for the astro stuff for March would be karmic cycles ending, both individually and collectively. So the reason why I talk about that is the first thing we have happening this month, March seventh, we have Saturn moving into the zodiac sign of Pisces. Now, for those that understand the ast astrology calendar, astrological calendar. Pisces is the last sign in the zodiac, right? So Pisces would be similar to how December is our last month of the year. Pisces is the last sign. Now, with Saturn moving into Pisces, this is bringing a close. It's starting to close out the cycle of a 30-year cycle. So this is significant because within this 30-year cycle, there are big themes of karmas. So karmas that have been repeating for you over and over and over. Things that you're like, why is this still happening in my life? For many of you, that may be coming to a close. So notice what that looks like for yourself right now. And this is also bringing through a big change in karmic cycle in the collective. So some of the things that we're like, oh my gosh, we're still seeing this on the planet. What the heck? Why? Why? Why are we not better than this? there are going to be closures in those karmic cycles. So this um, Saturn will be in Pisces from 2023 to 2026. And it's really going to highlight for us again, both individually and collective, our limits, our beliefs, our destiny through beginnings and endings, the mastery of our power, purpose, and boundaries. Now, if you have been following me on my daily card readings and even the Wednesday Wisdom with Spirit, uh, boundaries, beginnings, endings, purpose, those have been common themes. And so I love that we're seeing this in the star alignments and the planetary alignments. It's fabulous. So essentially, uh, Saturn moving into Pisces is basically like a cosmic catch up, something that can really kickstart your new perspective. And that has been something, perspective has been the word that my guides have been talking about since January, right? That this year was all about perspective. Your perspective will dictate the degree of success or the degree of suffering you experience in this year. Again, it doesn't mean that everything is going to be beautiful and perfect or all is horrible, but even within some of the most challenging situations, 
we can have these um, moments of perspective where we're like, you know what, this really bad thing happened. However, look what I realized and learned. Look who I am now because this changed me. I can't believe who I am now in this situation. So that's a pretty significant thing. So consider that. It's almost, uh, the, my guides are showing me that Saturn moving into Pisces where we are kickstarting this new perspective is also kind of the perspective you have, you know, when you, when you transition from being a teenager into an adult and you start to see things through the lens of an adult's eyes. I know that that really hit me once I had children and I started to see the world through that of a parent. And then my perspective allowed me to understand so many more things of why my parents did certain things, said certain things, had certain rules. It gave me this new perspective. So perspective is gonna be a big one with this big karmic cycle coming into our, um, kind of being like in the spotlight for us, right? So notice what things are wanting to end. Notice what things in your life are being cleared out, making space for, but also notice where new beginnings are happening because for many of you, it's the energy now of new beginnings. That's the focus. So keep that in mind. Now, the next thing that's happening in March that's really significant, on March 23rd, uh, Pluto goes into Aquarius. And this is all about transformation and revolution. This is a significant energy of shift. I believe the last time this happened was in, was when there was the American Revolution and the French Revolution, 1700s. Uh, this is really significant. So this is where we get a lot of the information, a lot of the insights, the things that were revealed to us since 2020 started and things really start to transmute, transfigure, change, um, alchemize, become something new. So very, very, very transformative time. So you have two big things happening, karmic cycles ending, transformation and revolution happening in the star systems, right? The planetary alignments, that energy down on earth is gonna be highly, highly transformative, changing the paradigm of how we show up, uh, interact and perceive our world. So notice what is changing for you. That's the biggest thing you can do in all of this. Notice what is changing. What comes forward? What have you released? Where are you, are you now? And what are you going to do now that you recognize that? That's what matters. Your conscious choice in that point. And that's what's so exciting about this time. So those are the main astrological things. Again, there would be so many more things going on as well. However, I also want to focus on what my guides had to share in addition to that. So with these big astrological things, my guides of the angelic realm, which I spoke about in February's Cosmic Consciousness Circle. So if you want to know all about that angelic realm, what it means, what a realm versus a dimension is, who is a part of it, why they're here, what's going on, uh, check out Cosmic Consciousness Circle. You can go, if you email us at uh, hello at avalonspirit.com, you can purchase that singular talk uh, and then get the down low on what's happening and why they're here because what they're saying is with these alignments, there is a big change now in galactic support and influence from the angelic realm. And this influence is not manipulation. I wanna be very clear about that. It's not manipulation. It's more that we hold the frequency now that allows these beings of higher consciousness to step in more. They cannot push through. They have to only come in when the frequencies of their energy can harmonize with ours. And that's all based on free will. And that's why spirit has always been like, we can't force anything upon you. We can only step in when you're ready. You need to ask. And essentially with the amount of people that have been awakening, that is essentially a collective ask from humanity. And so they're saying they're able to come in now and they're very, very happy to do so. We have been having a lot of uh, ET observation. The spirit world has been observing our planet too for a while. Um, there has been a fair amount of interaction, but now they have the ability to really come in to support and influence, meaning teach more people, uh, have a greater effect on more people. And that's not just through 
mediums, channelers, all that kind of thing, but you, the individual, your connection to opening your heart allows you to receive those divine inspirations, those intuitive hits, that higher energetic healing frequency is accessible by you, which is what's so beautiful because again, enough people in the collective have created a tipping point in frequency that that angelic realm frequency can come through and essentially permeate all things. Now, in terms of them also being here in support, they also wanted to say that they are very much in a position of being boots on the ground. And I talked about this a bit in the Spirit Coffee Talk. So uh, if you haven't seen that, go back to last Friday's Spirit Coffee Talk. And this boots on the ground is them really having this insider perspective of what's going on. These galactic support uh, beings, if you will, the angelic realm, which again is made up of angels, uh, interdimensionals, interfrequential beings, ETs, you name it, light beings. Um, they are really stepping in in a way that they're not just observing from above, but they're they're observing from being here within it. They're they're in involved in our frequency, therefore seeing it more from our perspective, which gives them a better insight as to what's going on. So that's a really positive thing to hear that there are boots on the ground. Now, that being said, many of you may start to notice you're seeing more orbs. That's the easiest way they can show themselves in our frequency. They have such a high frequency that when they densify their energy, the best way that it can manifest in our 3D reality is as an orb of light. And so if you are seeing blue orbs more specifically, that's when you condense all those frequencies together. They come out in our in our dimension as blue. And so that's really that angelic realm. So many of you may start to see this more often. And if you do, that's a great thing. Again, that's them being boots on the ground in our dimension. Now, the other thing they want to talk about too, and we've talked about this a bit, is time moving fast, both literally and figuratively. So we talked about time speeding up this year and our perception of time is going to be faster and faster as we move through the year. So I mean, already we're in March, uh, but our perception of it, this year is going to go by really fast. Part of that is, um, they were saying something about the earth spinning a little bit faster this year, actually. So that's the literal thing where they're saying time actually is moving a bit faster. But, um, the other way is that our perception of it, so much is changing in this year that when you think of all that's happened, it will feel like it went by extra fast. So they're saying it's kind of happening in both ways. Now, part of this is because the, sorry, they're coming in again right now. Hold on, I'm gonna pause one second. Okay, wonderful, okay. Three Guides of the Light just popped right in. And whenever they do that, it kind of, uh, it actually warps my vision a little bit, which is how I can tell when they're here. They said that they're doing, this is happening because it's working in our favor. And what it's doing is we've been talking about these four years of a, or four years of growth that encompass about a hundred years worth of ascension and change, right? So it's been power packed since 2020. We are in this fourth year right now. And in order to fit in everything we need, it's going to get faster. But that wasn't something that wasn't planned. It's kind of like once you gain the momentum, the snowball going down the hill will go faster and faster and faster and faster. That's essentially how this year is working to cram in as much as possible within this momentum. So for many of us, time moving fast is going to feel overwhelming. We're going to have to make decisions a lot faster. Uh, we're going to move through change and discomfort and, you know, recalibration faster and more often, which will seem very tiring, but they're saying, remember, you're in this fourth year and this is a good thing, a really good thing. So then when I asked them though, I said, okay, so 2024, then what happens in 2025 and beyond? So they said 2025 is a different template of energy than 2000, or 2020 to 2024. And they said it is a singular template and that in 2026, it changes into another 
bigger template. So to me, it feels like it encompasses more years. So 2025, uh, and we'll learn more about this as we get closer to 2025, but that one is going to be a very singular template. So it'll be different from what we've been going through, but it won't last long. And then it's going to be yet another one. It's almost showing me like it's a stepping stone between two things. Like if you're trying to jump from uh, one side of the riverbank to the other side of the riverbank and there's a small stepping stone in the middle, in the middle, it's like 2025 is that small stepping stone. Very interesting. So time moving fast, momentum on high. And they said, notice through this, one of the best ways to recognize the amount of change that's been happening to you is not only your thoughts, like we talked about, but also your body. How is your body changing? And that comes into the idea of the amount of ascension symptoms people have been feeling since this year started has been immense. And it will continue to be intense for, they're saying the first six months, so from now until summer, it will continue to be intense. It's like going through boot camp again. And you may already feel like you're quite the spiritual athlete, uh, but it's like taking it up another level. And so your body's having to adjust to the frequencies. And that's very common. But what the, the good thing is that they're saying is as you pay attention to what your body's doing, as you notice how it's starting to recalibrate and where you felt really tired and worn out, you bounce back faster or where normally when you would get worn out like that, you would get sick, but now you're not getting sick. You're just getting worn out. You're resting and then changing. They're saying notice these kinds of things because this can give you an idea of where you are in your progress. How is your body reacting differently? What is your body craving differently at different times? They're also showing me that if we even just look at a moon cycle, for example, the way in which our body moves through the moon cycle, when we harmonize with that, we create less disharmony, less stress or resistance, and we actually can move up in frequency simply by observing our reactions to the moon cycle alone, observing and then responding accordingly, right? So if you're feeling like you really want to draw inward, say on a new moon, and you feel really tired, but you give in to that where you can, you'll actually come back out renewed with more life force. And they're telling me it comes back to life force over and over and over this year, which is something we did mention in January, come to think of it. So consider how your body is changing. Let it be your teacher and your guide. The body is such an amazing, integral uh, energy, but I almost want to say like an entity of your existence. And the reason why I say that is if we look at the mind, body, spirit, trinity, right? Picture that triangle and you've got mind on the bottom, say the top is spirit and the other bottom is uh, body, right? We give our mind credit, realizing how much power it has in its thoughts, right? So you can almost see that like a separate entity. We give our spirit credit in its all-knowing nature, its divine plan, its knowing of something so much more, and we give it credit almost like its own entity. But we don't always give the body credit as its own entity. But what we have to realize is the body was created as a living life force vehicle. It's not an inanimate object. It's not a car. It is a a life force vehicle that interacts based on the energies around it. So it also has its own level of consciousness. And when you think about it, consider the, um, the way in which the body will fight to heal itself from injury. Even when all odds are against it, the body has an amazing ability to heal. And when it works in conjunction with the mind and the spirit, well, then it is an unstoppable force in many cases. So, the more we recognize how much our body can tell us, almost as its own entity, yet we bring that into the consciousness of everything we are, mind, body, spirit, well now we're talking about having this amazing level of consciousness. So there's going to be more to come on that as well. I will do a whole podcast on that, but notice what your body is saying. Now the other thing they wanted to say too is um, for many of you in your meditations the next while, you may notice you are being taken on a journey through fractals. So if you guys are familiar with fractals, that's where um, 
You can shrink something down to the smallest degree, but continue to see it grow and grow and grow, right? If, and the best way to, to understand fractals is to actually Google it. Google it or, or YouTube it and see a video and you'll see how as you keep journeying, it keeps dividing into smaller and smaller parts, but it never stops. And Spear wanted to say that many are going to start seeing reality through fractals. And the point of that is to show how all things are connected, whether they are immensely huge like the cosmos or tiny like the atomic nature in our bodies, all things are connected and all things are inhabiting a world of their own, as they say. And so for many of you in your meditations the next while, you may feel as if you're having some wild psychedelic like experience, although there's no psychedelics in your system. That is because the spirit world is showing you reality through fractals. It's another way to kind of mm, hack the matrix in a way when you see beyond the matrix of just 3D density. That would be kind of one example, but just pay attention. If you start to notice that happening in your meditations, there's nothing to be worried about. Spirit is just wanting to show you the depths of your reach, the massiveness that is the cosmos, but also the massiveness that is the very atomic nature of your existence, essentially, but also your, your body and your being. And now the last thing I want to mention too for the energy update again is this focus on heart frequency and love. There is such a big focus on bringing that in this year in relationships, in um, whether it's family, friend, romantic relationships, love energy is on high very purposefully. Part of it is to give us safe space to recalibrate. Also, the more love frequency we we step into or are willing to express, uh, the higher the frequency we carry, the higher the communication we can make with um, higher beings. It's all based on love frequency when we really get down to it. And so with such a focus of that in our daily lives right now, we are being given the template and the tools to open that in a very beautiful way. Because humanity really is designed to thrive in community to thrive in relationship. When we feel supported by others here, we can start to believe and feel we are connected and supported by all things. So notice where there is a deepening of your relationships this year. Notice where some relationships are cleaving off from one another in order, in order to make space for those new relationships as well. A lot changing in the heart space and a lot of that, a lot of that they're saying is leading into 2024. So We'll talk more about that as we get closer, but there's a big, big focus on harmonized unions in 2024. So a lot of you are shifting those things around, but also deepening those connections now, and that's a beautiful thing. So all of that to say, there are a lot of things going on this month of March that is really kicking everything into gear for the rest of the year. So the best thing you can do is be as real with yourself as you can, acknowledging what things trigger you, acknowledging what things you really have uh, moved through, what you've let go, where your strengths are, what you want to work on, what you want to have grow and flourish, and use the energy in your favor. Use this momentum, use these beautiful alignments of karmic endings, cycles of endings, like that's amazing. And then the transformation of Pluto in Aquarius, like this is huge, huge cosmic support in connection with the angelic realm really stepping forward. We have a ton of support right now. So a big thing is to really keep an eye on if a fear narrative has got you caught or is whirling you in a whirlpool of it, get yourself out of it, find your grounding, simplify your life a little bit till you can find your grounding again, and then start there. So. I will leave that with all of you. Thank you always so much for joining me. It's just so much fun to share these insights and uh, I sure appreciate each and every one of you. So have a beautiful rest of your day. Do check out avalonspirit.com if you're wanting to deepen your connection with spirit. Uh, I am hosting more courses and things this year, plus the personal journey guides have some beautiful offerings to help you on your path. So check that out and I will see you all next week.